Now moving on to the data analysis and visualization section. This particular section is actually broken up into three parts. So first we'll talk about data access, then from there we'll move on to the visualization part, and then we'll touch on some big data topics. In terms of data access, data comes in many forms, many flavors, let's say. Uh, so regardless of the type of data, its structure, or even its location, MATLAB can probably deal with it. We've added a lot of capability in this area. Specifically, I'd like to call out um, support for MDF files natively in MATLAB. Uh, we can now read and write Parquet files. That's new as of our 2019A, so that would be the spring of 2019. And then uh, data access from different cloud sources, including Amazon and Microsoft Azure as well as working with big data ecosystems like the Hadoop ecosystem. So if you have data, there's a good chance you can get it in to MATLAB and get it out of MATLAB. Now, one of the things that enables this are data types. And I want to just give a quick overview of data types. So if you've used MATLAB traditionally, you'll be familiar with doubles and logicals. And maybe for collections of data, you've worked with structures or cell arrays even. In the last four to five years, we've added some key data types that enable your workflows with data analysis and even data analytics. And so in, in terms of chronological order, they go like this. Uh, categoricals and tables. So categoricals would be used for discrete data types. Tables for collections of mixed tabular data. In the 14B timeframe, we introduced three data types that focus specifically on time. So in the past, you had things like date num, date fact, and date string. Now there, there's uh, date times and durations, which directly allow you to work with and manipulate time. Building on the ideas of tables, and uh, we had timetables come out, which is, a, and I'll talk about this in more detail in a moment, but it extends that idea of, hey, I've got this collection of some type of time series data, and I'd like to, to use it as a collection. And then strings, now for text as data. And then on the big data side, uh, in the 2016 B timeframe, we introduced tall arrays. And this is a brand new data type that allows you to work with data sets that are out of memory. So let's talk about each of these in turn. Tables, as again, they're for mixed tabular data. And they are really, really flexible. Um, I have to have a really good reason not to use a table for most of the work that I do. And there's a few reasons for that. Data can be accessed by name. So you can say name of the table dot column name. So the columns we call variables. And this really ups the readability of your code and helps you remember what you're doing. Also, as you share your code with other people, it makes the um, communication a little more seamless. Tables also contain properties, uh, which includes things like units. So every column in your table can have units. And there is a huge collection of functions <clears throat> built to work directly on tables. And this includes everything from sorting and working with groups to um, doing database type functions where you join different tables together. So all in all, tables are an extremely versatile data type and enable and really, I think, excel the amount of uh, analysis and analytics we can do in MATLAB. Categoricals, like I said, were really built to work on discrete data types. <clears throat> so if, for example, a column in your table, on this table, for example, the state column, has repeating values, you know, you don't necessarily need to store each value in memory to represent all of them. What categoricals do is um, have some, some memory benefit in the sense that they store the unique values once and then just point to it everywhere else. They also allow you to kind of sort and search your data a little more easy. And uh, you can enforce ordinality. If, for example, you wanted to, you had a categorical data type and you wanted to enforce that red was greater than blue, which was less than green. You can enforce those types of um, criteria on your categorical arrays. In terms of time, so I mentioned there's three data types here for time, and these really are key. Date times talk about a specific point in time, and that would represent you know, the way that that timestamp should look, so the format of it, as well as dealing with things like time zones and uh, precision all the way down to, to milliseconds. Um, durations and calendar durations as well for representing um, uh, ranges of times. And the real powerful thing about these data types is that they allow you to do the things you need to do with time. So do math on it, plot with it, um, you know, work around with you know, doing some type of data manipulation with respect to time. So it really furthers our ability to, to work with that and makes working with time almost even fun, I would say. 
Timetables build on the idea of a table, except the first column of a timetable is by default time. And then every column after that, every variable, what we call that, uh, is can be whatever data you need to have in your timetable. And these are really powerful when you're working with time series data sets because you can index by time or even a time range. Uh, you can take the data and get everybody on a, uh, a predefined time step if it's not. So if it's not a, a uniform time, you can do that. And then you can synchronize timetables. And that means if you have two timetables, let's say the first timetable was the data was sampled at 10 hertz and the next timetable was sampled at, say, 15 hertz. And you want to combine these data sets for whatever reason, to plot them or to do some type of calculation on them. Now that's a that's a difficult problem to work with. You have to think about interpolation at that point and where do the points line up? What do you do when they don't line up? And there are, just like tables, there are functions built to work on timetables to address that, that problem directly. So there's a couple of functions, retime and synchronize, that go hand in hand with timetables that make this work much less painful than it used to be. Strings, the first time you'll see double quotes in MATLAB, like I've shown here on the screen, uh, indicates to you that this is a string. So they are for representing text as data. They are faster than using cell strings because they're purpose built just to work with text. And what I've shown you here is in the past, if I needed to look at a collection of strings and determine if they had the letters DOG in them, I could use check to see if it's empty and then apply a string find to that. Now the uh, string family has a collection of, of functions or methods. One of them is contains, and you can say, hey, does this string contain DOG? And you'll get back uh, the answers that way. So very, very powerful if you're working with text and makes it a lot easier than working with giant cell strings um, in terms of working with text as data.